Today, I am going to be the best. Right, I want to talk to you folks about something that is this very close to my heart, it's very important to me, and despite the extremely clickbaity title of this video, it's not really about teaching you how to paint the best miniatures in the world or anything like that. Um, I want to talk about the mindset that goes into trying to make sure that you paint your best, and that's a very individual thing. First of all, I think it's really important that we, we discuss how it's it's not essential ever to feel like you can't paint fast and easy to feel like you can't paint quick simplified color schemes battle ready stuff like that you really should feel comfortable doing that kind of thing too and i actually think that's an important part of being able to paint your best because it's a good foundation upon which to build other skills when you want to push yourself there's a certain headspace you've got to put yourself into i think to be able to kind of give yourself the best fighting chance so we're going to go over a few tips for how to achieve that and, and what works for me and hopefully that's going to help maybe some of you folks find what works for you Okay, first and foremost, above all else, have a plan. Having a plan, it, it doesn't have to be something that's so tight and rigid and that you're stuck conforming to, but what it does is it just settles those nerves down a little bit. You know, knowing roughly what colors you want to use or any little conversion bits you're planning to do, having that kind of knowledge up front will just, it'll help you settle into the work and just be able to progress more at your own pace, more in a controlled, measured way. You kind of know when you're coming close to completion, that sort of thing. It doesn't mean that you're stuck with it. One of the most important things is slow down. Don't rush your way through pieces. I happen to have ADHD, and what that can often mean is that when I'm trying to concentrate for extended periods of time, I start to become very distracted or removed from the work that I'm doing, and it can be hard for me to stay focused. And to combat that, my natural reaction is often to start rushing. So I've had to become very, very aware of making myself slow down. And through learning this, through kind of being forced into it, I'm able now to realize the value of it as a general tool. So just next time you're working away at a piece, ask yourself, you know, should I maybe just relax a little bit here? Just take my time on this one leg or this one arm or this one blade, instead of trying to just blitz through everything, at, at, you know, a pretty breakneck pace and maybe I'll overlook something or make a mistake that I'll have to then spend more time correcting anyway. And then the rushing hasn't really helped me. Okay, this is an important one. Utilize your bag of tricks. Over our journey as painters, we we pick up little extra things, little nice things, little posh bits that we learn to do with miniatures, be that, you know, nice blended power blades or doing airbrushed highlights, that sort of thing. We don't tend to do these on every single miniature that we paint because doing these on every single miniature that we paint is a lot of extra work. But if we're trying to produce our best miniatures, we want to be thinking about which things in our bag of tricks might suit the miniature that we're painting. Pull those tricks out and apply them. Don't be afraid to, you know, get stuck in and do some stuff that is a bit posh and a bit, a bit naughty because that's really going to give you that extra feeling of sense of achievement. And one of the big things about painting your best miniatures is that you need to love them. Be honest with yourself, and not in a doom and gloom way, but ask yourself, is this my best painting? If it isn't, ask yourself, do I want it to be? Does it need to be? You know, and that doesn't necessarily mean the entire miniature, but each time you complete a section, each time you're ready to sign off on a section, perhaps look at it and just say to yourself, well, do I need to go any further with this? Do I need to push this any harder? If the answer is yes, push harder because invariably you'll regret it otherwise. If the work is becoming stressful or boring or it's grinding you down or it doesn't feel satisfying, don't be afraid to walk away. It's okay to go and take a break and that break doesn't have to be even just five minutes. If you wanna go and walk away and take a day, take two days, take a week, that's absolutely fine. 
There's this kind of unspoken fear often with miniature painters that we're afraid that if we stop working on a project, we won't start working on it again. But really, a lot of that comes from letting ourselves get into these really stressed ground down spots. And if we just take those breaks when we need them, we never get that wound up and that pissed off with our miniature to the point that we actually need to take that break and walk away. Okay, this one's important. Fuck the plan. I've already advised you to make a plan. And so, obviously we don't wanna completely disregard that, but things can change during the process and you can have a plan in your head that you think was a really, really good idea, but as you actually get to working on the miniature, maybe you're not so keen on it now. Don't be afraid to make changes. I'm gonna make a, a really trashy cliche comparison here, but if we compare humans to water, you know, we're very fluid creatures. We don't break if we bend, but we can become frozen in place and lose our flow. And if that plan is freezing you in, in place and not allowing you to be able to really create the thing that you plan to create, then is that plan really useful? Just don't be afraid to deviate. This can happen at any stage in the painting process, at any stage in the modeling process even. I'm gonna show you some footage now of something that happened when I was painting this one. So this is interesting. This is, I'm just starting to assemble this and it looks like even with the base on, there's more than enough space in there to reach that cape. That's pretty sweet. There's a positive change to the plan. When you bring all this together, just take a step back, look at the result and say, on this day, on this miniature, was this the best I could do? And if you feel like it was, you've painted your best miniature. It doesn't have to be the best miniature you've ever painted to be worth it. Let's take a look at uh, our Dark Apostle now and you can see what you think. <laughs> The most important thing to remember here with this miniature is this was my best. You're looking to paint your best, but none of us should ever be looking to paint the best because the value in how we look at art is, is so subjective anyway. And what we sometimes as individuals think is the best may not even be beautiful to the next person. So really what we're looking for here is how to push ourselves from our own perspective through our own lens and get the best results that we can get that make us happy. Painting as individuals, painting for ourselves. You can never really know how far you want to climb or if you even want to climb at all, if you even want to develop as a painter without being exposed to miniatures that make you say, wow. So it's important to have stuff around you that motivates you to decide for in the first place whether or not you want to grow, whether or not you want to challenge yourself. And you don't have to challenge yourself. It's not essential by taking up a hobby, by doing a thing, to want to constantly improve at it. So I really hope that these things that I've shown you today do help you to maybe crack a few levels up or uh, at least, you know, focus yourself in a little bit and figure out how to do some of the things that you've been wanting to do. There's probably a few things that I've not covered in this video today, and that might be just things that I don't know or things that I've not thought of. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you do have any tips for how you like to focus down, what your tricks are to get the best out of yourself. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I really, really do appreciate it. If you liked it, you can, of course, click the like button to tell me that you liked it. And if you want to see more from the channel, you can click subscribe and there's a little notification bell and that'll allow you to stay up to date on what I'm doing. If you're really, really into what I'm doing over here, feel free to head over to my Patreon. Links are in the description to both my social media and my Patreon. We've got tiers starting from as little as $1 a month, which is very, very little, but it does support the channel and allows me to keep making these videos, which is so important to me. Thank you so much, folks. I'll see you in the next one.